Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. As I promised you before, I would be providing you with a second recording about price elasticity of supply. And this is my second video about PES. What we will be doing in that recording, it would we will be talking about the price elasticity figures and we will be able to understand the difference between a perfectly elastic supply unit supply elasticity and a perfectly inelastic supply in details and finally we will be talking about the factors of price elasticity of supply so what makes it more elastic or more inelastic also for the special curves if my pes is equal to zero i would call it perfectly inelastic if it's equal to infinity it would be called perfectly elastic if it is equal to one it's a unitary elastic so the percentage change of quantity is equal to the percentage change of price same thing how they used to look like in the demand this is how they would be looking like in the supply I will be explaining the extreme cases. There are three extreme cases, but there are only two main ones when it comes to elasticity. We know that when PES is equal to one, I would say it is unit elasticity. This is the first case, but the two main ones would be when elasticity is equal to zero and also when it is infinite. We will be describing these two main cases in detail here i will be starting with the perfectly elastic supply uh, or also perfectly elastic demand all i want you to know is that it would always be a horizontal demand or a horizontal supply curve but since we are explaining price elasticity of supply this would be my major aim for today when I am talking about infinite elasticity or perfect elasticity, it means I am referring to an extreme case in which either the quantity demanded or the quantity supplied changes by an infinite amount in response to any change in price at all. In both cases, the supply curve and the demand curve, as you can see, they are considered to be horizontal. Now, the horizontal line it shows that an infinite quantity will be supplied, infinite quantity is supplied at a specific price. What does this tell us? It tells us that, um, and it illustrates the cases of a perfectly elastic supply curve, which means that the quantity supplied is extremely responsive to a price change moving from zero for prices close to price to infinite when prices reach the P here that we have it here so a perfectly elastic supply I just want you to know that it is considered to be unrealistic however the curve can be explained using just a little bit of imagination so what does that mean it means that any change in price will result in an infinite amount of change in quantity and i want you to imagine that you bake delicious cookies and your cost including your factors of production which is the input and the time were three dollars per cookie at three dollars you would be willing to sell as many cookies as you could you would not sell cookies if the price were lower than three so at a lower price you wouldn't be selling and if prices were above three you would sell an infinite amount so in summary your supply curve would be perfectly elastic at a price of three and any change in price would result in change in quantity supplied to infinity or zero, depending on whether price increased or decreased respectively.
Here I will be explaining the zero elasticity or the perfect inelasticity. And we will explain it in figure two. I just want you to know that it refers to extreme cases in which a percentage change in price, no matter how large, results in zero change in quantity supplied or demanded. So, for Yanni, you will always get an answer which is equal to zero. Remember, this was already explained before. This is my major aim. When I am talking about a perfectly inelastic supply, this is an extreme example. So goods with limited supply of inputs are likely to feature highly inelastic supply curves. I want you to think of an example uh, regarding housing in uh, prime locations. I want, so luxurious apartments that are found in Palm Dubai. Okay, Palm Dubai is known to be a luxurious area. And if I just want you to imagine if the housing prices increases there, there is a fixed amount of land on that island. And to me, as the person building these apartments, I need you to think that I cannot build as many houses as I want because I have limited space. My island is certain kilometers, and this is the only area where I can build the housing. So even if prices increase a lot, I am not capable of building more. So to me, perfectly inelastic supply, it means that the quantity supplied remains the same. Look, my quantity cannot change. I already built the buildings that I have on that island. I don't have enough space to build more. So no matter what happens to the price, as you can see, my quantity is not changing. Okay? Now, since we are done explaining the extreme cases, what I did to give you more examples, I took a screenshot of the book and I um, explained what the book was saying. Okay, so this is some further explanation. These are some extra notes that I would like you to go over. So we said, a perfectly inelastic supply, it means um, um, my, if I want to calculate it, my PES would be equal to zero. And here they gave us an example. More people are demanding to see a film at a particular cinema. Ticket prices may rise. However, it is unlikely to increase the seating capacity in the short run. For example, if the movie theater will fit only 30 people, they cannot increase the chairs in the short run. This is how much it will fit. So as you can see, the quantity will not be changing. Whereas in the longer run, if demand remains high, the owners of the cinema probably would increase the capacity of the cinema. They will uh, add more chairs. They will make the theater fit more than 30 people. This is in the long run, which means they need more time in order to do these changes. Perfectly elastic supply here, as you know, this is how the curve would be looking like. And if I want to calculate it, my answer would be equal to infinity. PES may come close to infinity in very competitive markets. In this case, firms would supply whatever quantity people want to buy at the given price. And an increase in demand would not cause a change in the price. So if demand and price were to fall, supply would fall to zero. This is an example of a perfectly elastic curve. Okay. And now our final extreme case. It is not one of the main ones. It is um, just an extreme case and is, it is not that important for you. But you need to know that when I am to calculate the PES or the PED of a unitary elastic curve, I would always get an answer which is equal 
to 1, and that means that the percentage change in quantity is equal to the percentage change of price. So when I am dividing them by each other, therefore I would be getting an answer which is equal to 1. Okay? And this is like a summary. If it's an elastic, if it's elastic, if it's unit elastic, your answer would be 1. Now, remember how in demand I told you, if no matter what you will buy the product and you consider it a need, the demand will be an elastic. I told you take this as a rule. And we said also if it was a want and people can wait and they don't want to buy it right now, then the demand would be elastic. Here, this is a certain rule for when I'm talking about PES. If you produce more, then the supply is elastic. When you cannot produce more, it will be an elastic. Remember, the cinema theater. In the short run, he cannot produce more. He only has the capacity of 30 people. And that's why we considered it perfectly an elastic. What determines or what are the factors or influences for PES? Guys, you can find this on your book on page 80. The first reason is the availability of stock of finished goods and components. So, for example, you guys, more stock or finished goods, it means we can produce more. This tells you that the uh, supply would be elastic. If, on the other hand, I do not have a stock or components to produce, so they do not have enough uh, factors of production, they do not have enough material they do not have enough inventory in order to produce and they cannot produce more no matter what i will say that it is an elastic the second reason it is uh, the degree of unused or spare production ca capacity so i'm telling you here for example when employees work if they work more it means over time so it means they can produce more. I would say it is elastic. If they do not want to work, they are not working, the employees are not working, it means no production. When there is no production and they cannot produce more, it means the, demand, the supply would be an elastic. The third factor is time period required to adjust the scale of production. So, for example, you guys, in the long run, which is more than a year, you have more time to get goods. So, you can produce more automatically. Remember what we said in the note? The moment you can produce more, it means it would be elastic. In the short run, that is what is available no matter what happens. And I cannot produce more. It means the supply would be an elastic. The last factor or the last reason would be the mobility and the availability of factors of production. So I'm talking about FOPs. Remember, the FOPs or the resources are needed to produce goods and services, right? If I have more of them, it means I can produce more. The moment I can produce more, I would say it's elastic. If I do not have any more inputs or factors of production, it means I have less resources and I can produce less. This is why the supply would be an elastic. Now, why is the PES important? Why? Because if the demand increases, a firm will know if it can meet the increased demand with or without changing the prices. They will know what to do. If the supply was elastic, demand is met without increasing the price. Whereas if the supply was inelastic and it was less than one, this tells the producers that the demand will be met only if they increase the price. Um, increasing storage, also, why does it help them? Because um, it tells the producers whether they need to increase storage to keep stocks of their production, of their products, and invest in additional and spare productive capacity, so should they produce more or less? Should they employ the latest production equipment and technology and machines? Or should they train the laborers 
the workers in order to produce more or their production was efficient. So this is how the price elasticity of supply would be useful to the producers. That would be the last thing that I would be explaining in this video. I would be talking about how price elasticity of supply affects decision making on consumers, on producers, and on the government. When I am talking about the consumers, you need to know that the consumers benefit when the supply is elastic. And this is because it means that the supply is responsive to the consumer demand. So if demand increases, price will increase. If supply is elastic, the quantity supplied will rise by a greater percentage than the change in price, the percentage change in price. So at that point, sales may rise significantly without there being a large increase in price. How it will be affecting producers, I will be explaining it here. You need to know that the producers, they want their supply to be as elastic as possible. Okay, so their profits will be higher at that point. The, and remember, to me as a producer or as a seller, my major aim is to maximize my profits. So at that point, the quicker and more fully I as a producer, I can adjust my supply in response to a change in demand and also price. Regarding the government, government, remember, they always want to make the people of the country happy. They want to help the people. They want to help the citizens. So if governments want to encourage uh, the production of a certain product uh, or the consumption of a certain product, what will they be doing? They will be giving the producers a subsidy. So at that point, governments use um, some policies in order to know which producer they need to be giving a subsidy to okay so for example a number of governments have changed the law making get easier for firms to hire and fire labor okay so the, the the government at that point they will have to refer to the producers are their supply being elastic or inelastic okay remember it is more successful given a subsidy to producers if their supply is elastic. So this is how it will be helping the government making decisions. So in general, what did we cover? This is what we covered. It measures the response of suppliers to a price change. Uh, it is the percentage change in quantity. So this is the formula of the PES divided by the percentage change in So guys, this is the summary of the PES. Please remember, I would advise you to write notes on your copybooks because I still believe when you write down the information, it will always um, be better because you will understand it more and you will be able to explain it more. Okay, that would be it for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a lovely day.